Okay. The defense is ready as well. Defense yes. president. I just discussed with the defense a couple of things about the DNA evidence. And one is that they had stipulated to everyone but Mr. Rivera's uh, DNA. And so we're going to read the stipulation of Mr. concerning Mr. Bryce and the DNA samples. And they also advised us that it would not be necessary to hand them the precise envelope for each person that they analyzed besides Mr. Rivera. I also talked with them about the fact that Detective Segovia had taken Mr. Rivera's um, DNA by court order, state motion in court order on July 16th of 2008. And they agreed that Detective Segovia would not have to take the witness stand today in order to authenticate that. He could do that tomorrow and the DNA people would testify. And uh, I asked them whether they were going to refer to a court order and they said, uh, that's no, correct. Okay. We understand. They're going to introduce the DNA to the expert and Detective Sylvia. I, I, I know they just want to tie it up. I'm stipulating he took the sample, but they want to tie it up. I don't object to doing it tomorrow with him. So he doesn't have to take the sample to do that. So if you're willing to stipulate that you took the sample and then you need to get into it. Yeah. From air from air? Yes. Okay, so we can just ask your client and just talk to him real quick and I'll be end up. I can ask him. I don't know if the problem is that stipulate. Yes. Um, I'll just, before you read that, you, I'll let them know that the stipulation is evidence as if the witnesses that come testified on the witness stand and they consider it as such. That although it's a, a written stipulation that's being read to them, they won't get the written stipulation to take back there. It would be equivalent of a witness. 
Thank you, Judge. In terms of uh, publishing the letter at this point, um, after the DNA analyst has testified, I would read the letter to the jury and display it on the uh, computer screen. Uh, after we get it admitted. After it's admitted. Oh, or did, I mean, we admitted the whole thing under exhibit 4I, and then I saw with James that you had him mark the envelope as exhibit 83, which had been 4I, and separately marked the letter. You now it's 5L. Envelope. You just admitted the envelope. Right. Well, part of, okay. what part of what happened was the envelope, I think, was always in a separate package, and the um, 4Q contained the actual uh, letter and part of the problem is it was incorporated with a bunch of property receipts and other materials okay. that I think we want to have to go back so I separated it out. Okay, that's fine. So we're gonna so you have to go through the admission of five L first and then you can publish. Yeah, okay. We get two admission? No. Oh loud? Great, it's going to Again. Right, so we have approximately five witnesses. We've got the two DNA-related people. We have the three people involved in um, talking with Mr. Rivera the day that he was stopped, and that would be the witnesses that we had for our discussion the other day, and then we have other people set up in the wrong. Okay. And we've got a little over two hours. Do we? Well, I believe we'll be finished by that. Perfect. of the discussions uh, court proceedings today, I would appreciate an opportunity to have an unliked courtroom where I can just do a test run of the uh, statement with that particular computer screen that we talked about over the last couple days. Okay. Just to check the sound. All right. Uh, that'd be fine. Uh, we're starting with our media hearing at the end of the day. The rest of us will bug out and It'll all be turned off. You have to unplug it or anything? Or? Yeah, I'll unplug it from here. Great.
Now, this is an agreement with regard to certain items or certain evidence that the parties have agreed to. They're going to read it to you. You're considered as if it's a witness to come up on the witness stand and offered evidence to you. You may proceed. Thank you. Stipulation. Catherine Fernandez Rundle, State Attorney of the 11th Judicial Circuit of Florida, by and through the undersigned Assistant State Attorney, and the defendant, Eric Rivera, by and through the undersigned attorney, hereby file this agreement regarding certain facts in this case. The parties agree to the following. Number one, Jairus Bryce is the cousin of the defendant, Eric Rivera. Number two, the state is not required to call witnesses to authenticate DNA swabs obtained from anyone except Eric Rivera Jr. Number three, the parties enter into this agreement as it relates to the above listed evidence in this cause and the jury can accept this fact is true. All right, now you may call your next witness. Your Honor, I believe uh, during the break that we had, there was an additional stipulation with regards to uh, Mr. Rivera's swap, DNA swap as well. Correct. Yes, there was. Yeah, that's, that's correct, correct. Judge. The defense is, uh, is going to agree to the same time that Detective Segovia did swap Mr. Rivera. Uh, and that swap is here to be entered. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. St. Paul's Robert Griffin. Robert Griffith. How are you employed? I am a criminalist and the DNA technical leader for the Miami-Dade Police Department Forensic Services Bureau. Okay. What is the Miami-Dade Police Department Forensic Services Bureau? Um, it's the Bureau of the Police Department that analyzes physical evidence from crime scenes. What are your duties there? Um, as a criminalist, I'll analyze physical evidence from crime scenes, um, test them for the possible presence of body fluids like blood, semen, or saliva, and I'm also uh, looking for skin cells, um, preserve those samples, and either send those to a DNA analyst to do subsequent DNA analysis, or there are times where I do the DNA, DNA analysis myself. Do you recall becoming involved in uh, testing that was done with respect to the homicide of Sean Taylor, Miami Dade Police Department case number PD07112663583? Yes. How did you become involved in that investigation? Um, I was assigned to be the serologist in that case. What does it mean to be the serologist in a particular case? So a ser the serologist in the uh, forensic biology section of the Forensic Services Bureau screens evidence items that are submitted to the crime lab, uh, like I said before, for the possible presence of blood, semen, saliva, um, skin cells in some instances, and um, preserve those samples and forward them on for DNA analysis. Was it your responsibility in this case to actually conduct or perform any of the DNA analysis itself? No, it was not. I'm sure 
showing you was in evidence already at State's Exhibit 55. Do you recognize that? Yes. How do you recognize it? I recognize it because it has my initials, a date, the case number you said before, and some item numbers. Can I ask you to go ahead and open up State's Exhibit 55? Are there any gloves present? Certainly. Thank you. Show the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what's inside the bag. Do you recognize it? There are many uh, small swab boxes. that I'm seeing have my initials, the date, the case number, and an item number on each. Would these be all the various different swabs of DNA uh, that were done at the scene and elsewhere and were forwarded to you for intake of the crime lab? Um, no, this, it seems that these are items 7 through 31. And would items 7 through 31 be from the actual crime scene itself? Uh, let me refer to my notes. I need a moment to refresh your recollection with the important record. Thank you. mentioned earlier, you did not actually perform any DNA analysis on any of these items, is that correct? Correct. No DNA analysis on these items. What did you do with, this, with these DNA swabs once you received them at the lab? Uh, on items, speaking of these items, um, items 7, 13, 14, and items 7, 13, and 14, I conducted a blood presumptive test on those swabs to determine if there was a possible presence of blood on those swabs. And what, what leads you to the decision to perform a blood presumptive test on a particular object? Um, a visual examination, uh, most of the time, if I open up the swab box, and there are red brown stains on the swabs. Um, if it looks like it could possibly be blood, then I'll go ahead and do a blood presumptive test. 
And what are the possible results of a blood presumptive test? Uh, it could be positive or negative. In this particular case, with respect to item 7, what was item 7? Item 7 was two swabs from patio wall number 1. And what led you to perform a blood presumptive test on that? Uh, there were reddish brown stains on the swabs. What was the result of that test? Uh, it was blood presumptive positive. Once you get that result, what do you then do with that item? Uh, I then preserve those swabs. I put them on a 3x5 index card uh, labeled with my initials, the date of analysis, the case number, the item number, and the description of the item. And I'll seal it in a foil pouch initial over the seal, and uh, transfer those items on for DNA analysis. DNA analysis performed by someone other than yourself? Correct. With respect to item number 13, what was that? Item 13 was two swabs from blinds inside the master bedroom. And did you perform a blood presumptive test on that? Yes. What was the result? It was positive as well. With respect to item 14, what was that? Item number 14 was two swabs from the inside door frame. And did you perform a blood presumptive test on that? Yes. What was the result? It was positive. Were those the only item, um, items between items 7 and 30 that you performed that test on? Yes. What did you then do with all of those items, 7 through 30? Item 7 through uh, 31 were all preserved, like I described before, put on uh, 3 by 5 index cards, uh, labeled with my initials, the date of analysis, the description, and the item number, sealed in a foil pouch, and transferred to the DNA analyst. In addition to those items, 7 through 31, did you also receive uh, several swabs from certain individuals? Uh, for intake at the crime lab? Yes. Showing you states for <coughs> for identification. Do you recognize it? Yes, I do. How do you recognize it? I recognize it because it has my initials, a date, the case number, and an item number. State moves 4E into evidence. Can you go ahead and open up States Exhibit 40? 